Hi, so in a previous video um, I was attempting the repair of that iPod dock. Now I'm still working on that one, um, it's behaving slightly strange and uh, not really getting very far forward um, on what's actually causing the issue. So I'm sure there will be another video on that in the coming weeks. In the meantime, I saw this DAB radio on eBay. Now this was sold as 40, is apparently working fine one day, next day wouldn't turn on. So this has arrived today, I think I paid all in all about £11.50 including postage, so not too bad. So the model on this one it is a Ferguson FRG-120D, so it's FM radio and DAB, no Bluetooth, nothing like that. Um, I did once buy a DAB radio, I can't remember if I did a video on it or not, but that was um, sold as 40 and there was actually nothing really wrong with it at all. So hopefully this is not the case, I was kind of looking for something that might be um, a co so kind of common repair sort of thing. So this could be bad capacitors, it could be the, the seller stated maybe a fuse has gone, but I would have thought he would have checked the fuse in the plug, but you never know. So we'll uh, plug it in and just see if it actually does anything. Okay, so rather than just plug it straight in, I'm just going to use the multimeter here and just check uh, between the pins on the plug um, and just see if we've got continuity there. Yep, so we've got continuity there, that's fine. To the neutral, let's check the live. Just a very simple little check, just in case you've got simply a blown fuse, but no, that's perfectly fine. So we know it's not an issue with the power cable. So I'll just get this plugged in. Okay, so let's plug it into the side of the radio. Where does it go? In the back. And do we have anything at all? Nothing whatsoever. So trying to turn this on, nothing at all. And I'm sure I did hear a slight noise when I plugged that in. So I'll just do that one more time. No, so I think that was just the uh, creaking of the plastic. So we've got a series of screws on the back. So we get those out and take a look inside. Okay, so I've removed all the screws. Um, this does kind of come out. It looks to me like there's some cables holding it on in various places. Yes, yeah, so we've got a multi-way connector down there, that will need to come off. So nothing immediately obvious at the minute, but I have noticed that it has actually got an onboard fuse as well down here. So we just test uh, that fuse of the multimeter and just make sure that hasn't actually blown. No, so that fuse is perfectly fine. So certainly not one of the uh, easy options this one. So we'll go further and get some of these cables out. And hopefully we can have a closer look at the board. Right, so annoyingly some of these are soldered. The speaker wires have been soldered and not put on with um, a connector. Um, I don't know why they have to do that, it's very frustrating. Same with the battery wires. And uh, what I've got here, yes, these are the wires coming from the transformer. So, mains coming in by the looks of it on the power connector here is going straight out to the transformer. Um, interesting, they've done it on two blue wires rather than a kind of live and neutral. I suppose it doesn't matter too much because it is AC, but. Yeah, it doesn't really help much. And we got the transformer power coming back onto the board here. So, a bit of hot glue there, take that off there. So what we can do is we can measure the multimeter there on AC and see if we've actually got any power coming back from the transformer. Again, as um, should be uh, always uh, said, be careful when playing with high voltage stuff like this. The voltage from the transformer will probably be, could be anything like 12, 24 volts AC, something like that. So we're not expecting uh, mains voltage on this board um, at all, but we were just uh, careful just in case. So multimeter, need to have this set 
four AC volts. See if I can get that in shot for you. Okay, so we've got the multimeter set on AC volts. I'm just going to probe the two wires coming off from the transformer. Yep, 12.4, near enough 12.5 volts, so that's perfectly fine as so we've got power going in to the board. It's quite nice actually, it's quite refreshing to see um, a sort of old school style with an actual transformer. So many things are switch mode power supplies nowadays, so it's nice to see a transformer, so we'll just unplug that. So I think the next step now is going to be to take this uh, circuit board off, so take the screws out here get it flipped over the other way around and then we can have a closer look on that side. Now this is quite an old radio, I think probably quite a few years old, I can't remember, I did look it up now. Um, I'll have to have a look, I'm sure one of the chips will have a date code on it. But it's certainly not a uh, sort of one that you can buy in the shops now, so resale price um, with it fixed on eBay will not be much at all and probably won't be much more than uh, what well, I've actually paid for it so no doubt I will just uh, find somewhere to put it to use in the flat so what we'll do is we'll take this connector here I can take that out and can we get this board off now Yes, we can, but these wires are really starting to become very annoying. So we've got these are the ones from the battery pack. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, heat the soldering iron up, and we will desolder the wires that are coming from the battery pack over here, and that should allow us to flip the board over. So we'll give that a go. Put a little bit of fresh solder on the iron. Perfect. Okay, so that's those two off, that's nice and easy. So hopefully we can flip this board over a bit easier now, which we can. Now of course we've still got the um, speaker cables, so the antenna systems, that's interesting, so that's Going in over to the side there, yep, that's fine. So, what's stopping it now? Mainly the transformer wires, etc. I don't want to. Um... Aha, now here we are. Right, so hopefully you can see that. So, there's a power resistor down here that seems to be completely burnt out. So, let's zoom in on that and have a closer look. Right, so hopefully that's. Uh coming out on the screen there. So here we have our 515, that's completely black. So that's definitely gonna be one of the main problems. Whether or not that has actually burnt out because of something else, that could be a possibility. So I think the first step is gonna to be to try and figure out what resistor that actually is. Um, I don't think I can get a service manual on this. There isn't really much information available online and Ferguson are not exactly the biggest uh, well-known brands either. So. We would just have to do a bit of guesswork. Hopefully, if I can get that out, maybe there's still some signs of the uh, markings on the back and we can uh, give it a go with something else. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed that resistor. Now, luckily enough, looks like we've still got the markings on the underside of it, so get that to focus. So that, to me, looks like it's possibly brown, black, silver, silver? I think we'll just measure it with the meter and just see if it's working at all but I, I would suspect that due to the amount that's burnt off there that's probably uh, completely dead all right so just hook up the leads there to that yep nothing at all coming through on the multimeter okay, something there struggling Yep, so that one's definitely uh, had it. So let's look up that resistor value and see what that's supposed to be. Okay, so having a closer look at this resistor, I'll get it to focus again now. Now, I thought it might be brown-black. I think it's either brown-brown, 
silver or that could have been because it's black and it could have been orange brown silver um, so orange brown silver is going to be about 0 0.33 of an ohm and uh, brown brown is about 0 0.11 of an ohm so um, now I have got some power resistors from a repair I was doing for a friend on his amplifier so I'll just find them and just see if any of them are similar in value so let's have a look and see what we've got so that's red red silver so that's certainly not going to be right for it um, let's have a look at the multimeter. I really should uh, try and learn the resistor colour code off by heart. I used to know it when I was younger and uh, kind of forgotten it as time goes on. So that is okay. So it's 0 0.27 of an ohm. So that's not far off the sort of 33. Um, got some other ones here. I'll just try those. They are. That's 32 ohms, so I don't want that. So I think, if anything, probably the best bet is to try that, that one there. It's could just burn straight back out again. Um, that's possible, especially if there's a fault further down the line that we're not aware of yet. But that might be the answer, is to try and get that one in there and uh, see what happens. Right, so I've placed that resistor in there, got that soldered in. Whilst doing that, I notice you've got this jumper link here. Now, there is no sort of trace there, um, no pads on that side. It does seem to connect from the other side, so I'm not sure if I should reflow some solder on that as well or not. So I might try it without, and then if it's still not working, we'll just put some solder in on that joint and see if that makes any difference. Right, so I've just uh, re-secured the circuit board. I've not screwed it all back together again, just placed the screws in there, just hold that in. So if we press the power button now, do we get anything? No. Of course we don't, school by error. Um, I moved it around the main connector lead to come out the back here, so, oops. Always double check that your connectors are plugged back in. And these are really annoying. I really wish manufacturers would leave a decent amount of uh, length on the cables. I don't like these either, they don't go in very well. There we are. Right, so we'll try again. Plug the power lead back in. There we are, welcome to digital radio. Let's just turn it on and see if it comes on. Able to tell me with the bliss symbols, the word Dracula. You know, this was the kind of excitement when the child would think of a way to express. And it would... Okay, so that seems to be working absolutely fine. So let's do an auto tune, quick scan, searching. Well, there we are. I think that's pretty much fixed. So obviously I'll have to just double check that everything works on it, but I don't have any reason to believe that there'd be any other issues with it. Quite why, of course, that uh, resistor burnt out, we don't know. These things do happen, so there's no point sort of going further down the line trying to figure out if there's anything else that caused it to burn out. It most likely is just one of those things that happened. So if you've got a Ferguson FRG120D or similar model, then yes, check that resistor. And uh, yeah, so the ones I use to replace it with are these ones. Um, come on camera, focus. So these are red, red, silver and gold. And what did I say the value was on those again? I think it was 27 ohms approximately. Now it will have to be a power resistor as opposed to a standard resistor. I don't think it was as high as, well, I can't remember what rating these are now, I think these are about one watt or more. So 0.27 ohms thereabouts. So 
and that's the value I've shoved in it. Obviously, that is not the exact value that it originally had in it. Um, but I'm not too worried about that. It's close enough to the what we believe is the original value. So can we change stations? Bird song, varied speech. Yeah, well, that seems to be it working was fine. So close to him as language, and having other people, as he would see it, meddle with it. We were accommodating. Oh, I see. Children. You have to actually press the and that was very select button for him to understand. Tuning. Now the DOB reception is not brilliant in this location. Not available. Try another station. I would certainly say a lot of the uh, stations are certainly not available here. Um, Uh, that one? Nope. Oh yeah, that does work. So there we are. That appears to be working exactly as it should, and that was all down to that one burnt out power resistor. Well, I hope you found that video interesting. That was certainly a uh, very quick repair, and uh, just goes to show how sometimes these things can be very easy to repair. Other times, like the uh, iPod dock, very difficult to repair. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe. And uh, if you click the little bell icon, then you'll get an email when I upload a new video. And if you'd like to help support this channel through Patreon, then links are below. That would certainly be much appreciated.